um, yeah, so thank you very much for being here. I know it's right at the end of the day, and this is going to be irritating, but it is my fault. Uh, cool, so I, my name is Simon. Um, I'm sure some of you might know me. I run a, a conference, a competitor conference to this one. Uh, we can talk about it later. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today is, is uh, pet projects and why I think that they're important. So who's met someone new here today? So a couple. And I'm going to guess that for the most part, we all introdu introduce ourselves as uh, a programmer. That's kind of how we do it. Yeah? Um, I think for the most part, that's probably what we do, or developer, or architect, or engineer, or whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of like a real pity, because we had a developer conference. And it's like the worst way to introduce yourself by saying, I'm a developer at a developer conference. It's not the kind of thing that really makes you kind of stick out. And I think one of the ways to sort that out is either to have this fantastic day job. So who has a day job that they actually can't complain about? OK. So it's a, a higher percentage. But for the most part, I'm not the kind of person that really gets invited back to dinner parties or briars. <laughs> because when they, they go around the, the circle and everyone's complaining about how much they hate their job and it gets to me, then I kind of kill the conversation because I don't actually hate my job. And I think we're actually really lucky to work in an environment where we can actually have fun. Uh, and it's, for me, it's a hugely privileged um, kind of environment to, to work in. So in terms of what's, what is a pet project, I think it can kind of be whatever you want it to be, um, whether it's uh, something that morphs into a, into a startup like, like the previous speaker, or it's something that actually becomes like a proper company. Um, that's kind of irrelevant. For me, it's something that you do because it, it scratches your own itch. It's something that you either want to find a solution for, because you actually need that solution, or you just want to have a, a creative outlet. And to be in an, an environment where you can actually spend time purely to have a creative outlet for your, your vocation, I think is a, a really cool thing. Uh, I'm guessing musicians do it, and artists do it. I'm not suggesting that we artists or musicians or engineers, uh, but I think that's a really cool thing. I don't really imagine accountants kind of kind of playing with numbers, you know, on the weekend. Um, that's not meant to trigger any accountants in the room, um, but you might be in the wrong place. Um, so in terms of, yeah, so a pet project can kind of be whatever it is. Um, and it, you can even view it as a startup, because neither is really meant to make any money or any profit. So the, the kind of words are interchangeable, which is quite cool. And also, I think having a, a pet project or a passion project or a side project, whatever you want to call it, is, is kind of the same as, as CrossFit and being vegan or, or doing your MBA, because you're not going to do it without telling someone, <laughs> because then it's, it kind of nullifies the whole point. You know what I mean? If you don't do CrossFit, or you do CrossFit and you don't tell someone, are you actually doing CrossFit? It's that whole cat in the box thing. So now I've triggered a few people, which is fine. I'm, I'm just trigger happy day. Um, so again, I, I really, without kind of pushing the point, I, I really think we are really lucky to do what we do. Uh, I really do, and I think it's, it's an incredible time to be in tech. Uh, and often, and myself included, we kind of forget to, to actually remember the, the cool ability we have, the fact that we can you know, sit at a, at a keyboard and, and drum out some stuff and ship it, and it has some kind of use. Or we can invoice someone, or kind of ideal, we do both. Uh, but that's a really cool place to be. And, and I think this is, you know, this is kind of me on a good day when I'm surrounded by all these cool bits of tech that I do. Um, and that's a really happy place to be. And then this is me as, as the bulldog behind the fence who wasn't invited to the party. <laughs> and I, I've been through stages of that before in my career. And I, I have kind of days. Thankfully, it's not kind of weeks and months anymore. But I, I think it's... It's one of the reasons why I think there's so many resignations in the industry and so much churn is because people have this, this mindset that the next company is going to be so much better and they can use Node and Mongo and whatever else. But you can actually kind of have a cool experience by using the idea of a pet project to play with different bits of technology. Uh, and that's certainly something that I've done over the years, and that's kind of the whole point of the talk, is to push this idea of even if your day job is not necessarily fantastic, 
you can get that outlet, which is often what people kind of want. They want an outlet for using cool bits of technology. And you can do that by having a, having a pet project. Um, that was meant to be an animation, but I, after all the years, I actually can't figure out how PowerPoint works. Um, but that's fine. It's a bit of honesty for, for the beginning. So GitHub's kind of pulled back from, from pushing this, this kind of pro death march approach to you know, how many weekends did you work and did you kind of string all kind of 30 days of your, of your months together and, and you're pushing a whole bunch of things. And each of those different blocks kind of has a different color depending how much work you've done. And I think that's a really bad thing and they've kind of pulled back from that. But I really don't think, I think the only good examples of these that I've seen in terms of people that I would hire is people that actually would choose not to work for a considerable peri period of time in order to get cool kind of shapes and Pac-Man <laughs> things. I think that's, um, you know, you might get fired in your day job, but you're probably going to get hired for someone like a, you know, like a pet project thing just because you've got that sense of humor. So the idea of a pet project for me is not about pushing an overwork mentality at all. Uh, I think weekends are, are important to have fun and evenings are important to have fun, but that doesn't mean that you can't spend a little bit of the time exploring new bits of technology and, and actually kind of pushing that, that, that knowledge boundary. Uh, I see so many people that push back against the ideas of going to user groups, which is fine, it's your, your prerogative, but then they also don't experiment on their own right or their own time. So I think you know, kind of choosing your fight is a good thing. Um, but the idea of coming up with a project, even if it's not something that you're going to make money out of, but just something that you want to do for the sake of doing, um, I think is a really cool thing to spend some time on. Uh, and whether it's you know, brewing beer or it's doing whatever it is, um, if you're actually passionate about something, it tends to actually help you do it. It doesn't tend to be a, a job anymore. Obviously, the ideal is that your day job gives you that satisfaction, but that's not really something that's realistic for a lot of people. Um, and I also think that there's a, a misconception that as a developer, and it kind of ties in, I think, with what, what Arjun said earlier, is we're not paid to type. You know, if you can do your job without typing reams and reams of code, that's a good thing. Uh, and I think in some respects, looking at someone's, the amount of GitHub repos that somebody's the owner of, kind of pushes that mentality of, you know, how much churn, how much output do they do, as opposed to how many problems do they solve. Um, and that's obviously not a very popular um, angle, but that's certainly my opinion. I don't want to hire a, a typist. I want to hire somebody that can actually solve problems. And if solve problems is, suggesting you buy a couple of components or kind of drag and drop things together and that's the solution, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so that's, that's kind of my thing. And also the idea of with a, a project that you're actually focused on shipping, it's, it's a much better demonstration of your ability than just how much code can you churn out. Um, I think we've moved from that mentality a long time ago, uh, or a lot of people have at least. So in terms of measuring success, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of different factors that you can do. For me, the two most important ones are, did you actually have fun doing what you did? And have you got something to demo? And it's a really cool thing in a conference, in a, like waiting to, to register. If you're talking to someone that you don't know, and they ask you what you do, instead of saying, I'm a developer, which is the usual kind of, I'm really you know, not interested in talking. Um, if you can actually whip out a phone or something that you've done and actually show them an app or a, uh, a Moby site or whatever it is, I think that's a really cool demonstration of your ability. Um, we can't always show customer projects, I understand that, and that's not really going to change. But being able to actually demo um, a pet project that you've shipped, uh, for me, just puts you in a, you know, in a, in a good small percentage. Um, that's certainly my, my two cents. Uh, so the Raman profitability is a Paul Graham thing, uh, and that's kind of saying you've, you've made enough money that you can buy yourself noodles. Um, which is obviously a low barrier to entry. Uh, and you don't have to make money from a pet project. I think the fact that you've actually shipped it and it solves some kind of problem, I think is a really cool, uh, really cool place to be. That's probably a much better place than a lot of products that get shipped that just don't find a user. Uh, and exposure kind of ties into what I was saying about being able to demonstrate something. Um, and in an interview, when I, have, when I have an interview with people, the one thing I really enjoy is being able to ask them to show me something. And hearing that they did some huge system for a bank, but they can't show me anything, kind of tells me that they were part of a, like a 300-person team, and they did kind of one small thing, but they're kind of taking ownership of it because they can't actually demo anything. Um, so being able to actually take ownership of something you've done and say, this is what I've done, I think is a cool, uh, a cool thing to do in a demo. So in terms of book recommendations, 
Uh, the one on the right is just me being, being childish. It's not actually a book. Um, so the two that are really cool is uh, Overlap by Sean McCabe. And uh, I haven't read the Make book by uh, Peter Levels. Uh, but if you don't follow Peter Levels and kind of the amount of stuff that he's done, I, I would definitely have a look just to kind of follow that sort of mindset of, of shipping things the whole time. Um, my belief is he's doing it to actually make some money and not just to kind of have fun. Um, but if you can do both, I think that's a cool thing. But I also think the most important thing for me is, is just actually getting started. Uh, I work with a lot of startups, and so many of them are shopping around for the technical co-founder, which is uh, kind of code for, please come and work for us, we're not really going to pay you very much money. Um, but I mean, we're in a position now where you don't have to hire you know, a huge team to actually ship something. You can you know, have a small, small team of people for a weekend or a week or whatever it's going to be and actually ship a product. Um, so I think that's, that kind of gets lost in, in some of the conversation. Um, so by all means, read and kind of do a bit of research, but I think there's a lot of value in just sitting down with the ability that we have and actually ship something. Um, so that's definitely the, the kind of angle for the talk. So in terms of ideas, you know, I, th I hear a lot of people talking about how all the, all the good ideas are done, and that might be true. Um, but here are a couple of ideas that, that I've been thinking of that I'm probably not going to do. And the, the key point here is that most people are just not going to do anything. And you see it, anyone that's in a, in a committee, uh, you'll see the same things kind of coming, coming back over and over and over, because the general thing as a human being is we kind of just want that, that contact, that social contact. We don't actually really want to do any work. Uh, I think fundamentally we're all lazy, which is, which is just how it is. Um, but here are a couple of ideas for maybe someone actually wants to take an idea and run with it. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunities out there. And, and at the moment, if you're doing anything with blockchain or anything with AI or deep learning or even the, the PWA angle, um, I mean, that's a really cool bit of tech to play with. So we've got a whole kind of library of things to choose from, which is cool. And just in terms of you know, whether there are any more good ideas, uh, I spent probably a day uh, last week looking for a good date picker for bootstrap. I mean, it's that fundamentally, it, I always, it's kind of weird because technology gets to such a cool level that we can, uh, you know, send kind of drones into outer space, but then fundamental things like, like getting a working date picker for the latest version of Angular and bootstrap is, is like a bridge too far. Um, so there's a fair amount, of, fair amount of movement there from a technology point of view. And also things like home automation. Has anyone actually got home automation going properly at home. Yeah, so I mean, it's the same with me. I can't unlock my house with, my, with an app, or I can't switch on lights with an app. And I know you can get these things, but they're not commonplace. Um, so I think there's a lot of room for um, kind of growth. So in terms of feedback and, and how you react to people who react to your, uh, you know, to your product, and whether it's an actual product, it's a company, or it's just a pet project, kind of doesn't matter. Uh, but there was a, a Twitter conversation with Peter Levels who's this guy that's, that's made all these, these phenomenal little projects, um, including the book that I recommended. And the one thing he was just talking about is, uh, you know, he's had this record day for one of his job sites, and he's made a couple of thousand dollars, which is fantastic for, like, one of your projects. I think that's a really cool thing. And then, I don't know if he was doing it specifically to trigger the, uh, the Snowflake architect, because that's the kind of thing that I would do. Um, but then as a separate tweet, he kind of mentioned, it's actually just like a 5,000-line 5, 5, uh, single PHP page. <laughs> and then he kind of sits back for like 30 seconds, I guess, waiting for everyone to, to comment. Um, and then someone comes out of the woodwork and, and says, no architecture, question mark. And his response is, no architecture, as a statement, <laughs> which I think is very funny, because it actually doesn't matter in a lot of respects, you know, how you actually do this stuff for a, a pet project, as long as you're actually shipping something. Um, and I think it, you know, a lot of it kind of comes down to a day job as well. I see so many people uh, gold plating things. Um, and they're using up so much budget, but they're not really keeping an eye on actually what the, what the business wants. Now, I'm not suggesting do it really badly, but there's kind of a bit of a break-even point. And then this guy asked about how many thousand lines of code and how you know, possibly someone could take over the, the project. So Peter responds, it's 4,500 lines of code, and if someone wants to take it over, they just open up the project and edit the file, <laughs> which I think is really funny, again, because that's just kind of where my sense of humor is. And then, and then he gets lectured about how bad... <laughs> He is, you know, as a, as a human being, because he's done this to, to our industry. 
And then he responds, just to kind of end off the conversation, with um, a single PHP page is like the biggest remote job site in the world. <laughs> Which I think is, is again, it's, you kind of wish that, wish that I was this person and I had that kind of <laughs> audacity. Um, but the, the moral of, the, of the, the whole point with these kind of tweets is just to say, if you're shipping something, you're probably doing more than a lot of people. So kind of take that feedback with a bit of pinch of salt. Um, I'm not advocating huge PHP pages, and probably not, probably not advocating PHP in general, but um, it's, it's just important to kind of bear it in mind. So my, my kind of call to action or my hope for what you're going to be doing if you're not doing it is, is spend the, this you know, considerable amount of knowledge that we build up, um, including you know, the information we've got from today, and actually choose a, a cool bit of technology and a cool bit of a, a thing to make, and actually put some of the creativity that, we, that we've got, and it's often kind of a bit closeted, and actually use it to go and make something and ship something. Uh, and if that turns into a whole company, that's cool. Um, but if it just turns into a bit of a side project that you can demo at the next conference while you, you're waiting to register, I think that's also absolutely fine as well. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Otherwise, I think we're moving on. Josh. I've got a, a bunch of pet projects which I'm happy to talk about, but it wasn't really the intention to kind of showboat, um, maybe because nothing's really worth showboating. Um, <laughs> but it, it is a good opportunity to, to kind of risk things. I, I see so many developers kind of risking, kind of betting the farm on you know, some cool thing, and then I need to tell them very subtly in a meeting with a whole bunch of other people that they're not actually betting their farm, they're betting somebody else's farm on like the next version of React, but they've never actually done like a JavaScript project or anything like that. So doing these kind of projects, even if it's a throwaway thing, that's fine, I guess. Uh, but it just means that you've got a safe place to experiment and fail. Um, fail fast is great when somebody else is not actually footing the bill. Otherwise, there's a bit of a problem. So, all right, cool. Thank you very much. Oh, shoot, one more, sorry. Sure. So, so, my, so the, the question was around kind of time management and you know, prevent yourself from kind of overworking and kind of where do you find the time. My feeling is be very selective about the technology you choose and have a, um, for me, the, the mindset is on shipping something. The mindset is not on writing huge architectures and, and all those kind of things. So the, it's kind of a different spin. And I think for the most part, you could ship something, you know, in a, in a day or in a weekend or something and then chip it and see if it has any kind of legs and then see what else you do. Uh, I'm definitely not a fan of, of overwork. I think that's, uh, that just kind of ends in, ends in tears for everyone. So, Okay, cool. Thank you.